we have uh, heard presentations about sensing on the large from the distance of the landscapes. I will be talking about uh, sensing uh, from quite close, from close to the eye. And I will be talking about uh, uh, how to do very robust uh, eye tracking, uh, and that can be used for various purposes. And then at the end, uh, I will introduce some of the possibilities that eye tracking can bring to the forestry machines or forest bioeconomy and to the very beginning of that to the uh, human operator monitoring. Uh, but I could not really be standing here if uh, there wouldn't be a, uh, quite a long history of uh, uh, very basic and very deep uh, research. Uh, we have started this company as a spin-off two years ago and uh, before that we have managed to uh, uh, collaborate on eye tracking with many and many partners around the world and uh, uh, we are of course still continuing in, 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 in that part of the academic research. And uh, as any research should be, uh, starting from a theory, uh, we found some problems and solving those problems uh, uh, opened up new innovations. And so uh, somewhere in the uh, 2008, we have figured out some very clever ways how to uh, process and analyze eye tracking data. And this has opened various possibilities. And so we grabbed on, 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 on one of those and we have uh, brought the IPR out from the academic domain and then uh, we operate in a company. We also were the very first ones worldwide to create um, a robust and uh, efficient uh, eye tracking for surgical microscopes and that's that's some, some of the main uh, you know, uh, IPR that uh, we have uh, in, the, in the company uh, at the moment. But so uh, if you want to do eye tracking um, there is two things. Uh, it has to be fast. Uh, you need to have the data almost immediately, under under 10 milliseconds uh, from where the eye moves. And also it has to be robust. It has to work on my eyes. It has to work on all population worldwide. It has to work in this dark room, outside, and so on. And so that's the problem. But the problem is that there is not really, or there hasn't been really such a solution. And that's why you don't have your eye tracker now in, 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 in your TV or in your car or on the, on the lid of your laptop, because there hasn't been any robust. And since there hasn't been any robust solution, the big manufacturers would not really put it uh, uh, in, in use. And so what we have is, is the robust uh, uh, solution to this problem and such that can be embedded to, to various application domains, to head-mounted displays, uh, binoculars, viewfinders, helmets, uh, uh, ocular devices. And so uh, if you would be interested in uh, any of those applications, please uh, contact me or uh, some, some of our guys and uh, we will be happily talking with you about customization for your, for your purposes. Uh, so what we have, uh, it's as I said, it's a robust and fast solution to the to the eye tracking problem. Uh, what more, it uh, tolerates uh, the movement of the sensors, so it doesn't have to be really fixed uh, in uh, relation to the to, to the um, to the human. Uh, it allows theoretically very high speed of eye tracking, so you could use it, for instance, for foveated uh, rendering of virtual reality screens and stuff like that. We also file a patent for some of the illumination. Um, um, innovations o over here. And we can do it for one eye or we can do it for two eyes and uh, uh, that also depends on the, on, on, the, on the applications. And then there are two um, forms in which uh, we can do it. We can do it as a, as, a, as a wearable one. I'm not sure whether this is a, a laser over here. We can do it as, as a kind of wearable model. So this allows, for instance, the operator uh, of, the, of, of a machine or we can uh, embed these as, uh, as a you know, uh, end piece to, uh, to an ocular device. So that's that's what currently uh, we have. And then there is a uh, various ways to uh, connect to the data that comes out from the tracking solution through the API. So it can be integrated uh, really freely to uh, to any uh, any user uh, context. Well, and uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's not only fast and robust, but it's also accurate. We have done some comparison with uh, some of the former market leaders and uh, we are about twice as far, twice as uh, more accurate and uh, precise as what has been there on the market recently. Not only that, as I said, uh, you don't need to be, do any recalibration, so we can put away the system and come back and just resume the, the sensing. It just works like that. No, no calibration or recalibration needed. We have uh, had some uh, customers already. So there's, um, for instance, one installation at the uh, Kuopio University Hospital in the Microsurgery Center. And then uh, we have been working with a big uh, Olympus 
uh, or, or the big uh, optical manufacturers such as uh, Olympus or, or Lake, and uh, these are now uh, using our uh, solution also. So, uh, what could then gaze rocking bring to uh, to the forest machine industry? Uh, you have all you have you know much more about this domain than, than I do, and then I can do only uh, some of the you know painting some some of the uh, scenarios. Um, well, we know that. Uh, yeah, sorry. We, we know that uh, the environments are very rich uh, visually. There, is this, there are displays, there is trees, there's a lot of situation awareness uh, that the operator needs to maintain. Uh, and so uh, there is also uh, this notion that, uh, that the machines have already been developed quite well. There is not much difference between the vendors, but what makes the difference is the operator. The more efficient uh, uh, operators uh, uh, can, can do more of the, of the work cycles, can do it more efficiently, can do it more safely, uh, can, can do it uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that it doesn't uh, uh, damage the forest and so on. So actually the, uh, the possible increase in productivity is in the operator, it's not much in, in, in the machine. And so how do we, how do we learn about it, uh, about, uh, about the operators? Well, we would put a, an eye tracker on there head and then do some sun tracking. So here, for instance, there is an example that we did uh, in a training facility. Uh, you can see the gaze point over here and then we are measuring uh, the typical patterns that uh, people uh, use, uh, how they uh, use their eyes when operating uh, this forwarder. Or then this is this, the left is on, on, the, on the training ground and then the, and the right is in, in the real environment. So you again see that uh, the eye tracking is pretty robust. We can get really decent uh, information and through that insights into what's, what's happening. So, and then this is, this is in, in the harvester situation. Again, you see how many decisions uh, per second this uh, operator has to do. And so there's certainly a possibility to tap in, into this knowledge and then maybe create um, intelligent training environments based on uh, th this knowledge. Of course, what we can do, uh, we can really chop these to a kind of movement by movement analytics and we can create again intelligent uh, modeling of these processes and then uh, use it for further improvement of, for instance, of the students or retraining or uh, another type of applications um, that really uh, it's not really our, our role to just really uh, uh, figure out what, for what this information can be used, but there are just some of those. And if we know that uh, the, the, the good guy can make one cycle in 16 seconds and the poorer guy can do it in 20, 20 cycles, then you can imagine how much this difference accumulates uh, in, in the time of, of one sh uh, work shift in, in, in the forest and then after, say, 60 uh, repetitions, 60 cycles, uh, there is already a noticeable difference in the performance. And what we bring is the information about what has been happening with the eyes uh, during the time and we can learn from the good, good models and correct the, the poor uh, visual attention strategies. So that's maybe one possible way how to use this, this data. So, yes, uh, if there would be, or I hope, I hope there will be an eye tracker in, in, in for training and monitoring of the operators, we, we would get uh, quite uh, uh, objective and real-time data about what's happening. And uh, this means that there could be, for instance, gaze training uh, used in, in the cockpits. Um, we can, of course, do uh, cockpit uh, ergonomic evaluations, uh, figure out whether there is a need for extra displays or there is maybe information overload and stuff like that. And, of course, you could use, uh, because this is real-time, you could use GAZE for uh, real-time input and, and control. And there is more and more applications that are possible. So uh, that will be the end of it. Uh, I, I would be very happy to talk more, either about uh, further investments in the company or then uh, some collaboration opportunities that we are very much uh, happy to to, to join. Thank you. Forestry um, schools in yes. Finland? Yes, yes. So, uh, uh, on these examples that I've shown, they have been recorded uh, in, in Valtimo, in, in these uh, professional training schools for forest separators. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, the, the substance, the, the know how that comes from the people who do really understand the didactics and the education of the forest machine operation. So we could implement it also in Estonia, in our forestry schools? Definitely. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions or comments?
at least I need, I would like to know that now you are using, as my colleague Timo said, that in brain surgery and then the forest machine. Where else you can use the gaze tracking? Well, um, any any domain that requires uh, um, vision. So that means uh, if you do aiming with your um, gun in the forest, we can also provide information for that. Uh, if you fly um, a Zeppelin, maybe also over there. I mean, um, if you drive a car, if you cook your tea, um, everywhere the eyes are present. We are not really aware of that on, on, on every day, but even for experts, the gaze, the, the vision, the eye is always there. And uh, we can really tap into that knowledge and um, create uh, intelligent systems. I'm wondering that uh, we have already here some presentation related to uh, mobile ap application and so on. So are you using also to develop about the usability of application and maybe some internet pages or services and so on? Yeah, yeah there is a, uh, we mainly uh, pitch ourselves as a technology company, not really doing consulting, but uh, using these devices, you could, for instance, do the um, user experience evaluations for the cockpits or for the, for the mobile phones, for the web pages and stuff like that, certainly.